What is up, people? Today I have got something very special for you guys, and that is my very first video game review. And I have that coming up for you guys next. I am uh, so excited to be doing my very first video game review for you guys. Initially, when I started the HD by Me channel, I uh, had planned to do movie reviews, Blu-ray reviews, and 4K Blu-ray reviews, and games. Games were actually a big part of it, but I never could really get it off the ground. And even though it is very, very late, and this is probably the uh, last Spider-Man PS4 review that you guys will actually see up, I am still going to put it out for you guys just to enjoy and just know in the future I would be more diligent with getting these reviews to you guys out in time. I don't get anything early. Anything. Not the Blu-rays, not the 4K Blu-rays, and not the games, but um, I still do try to get these to you guys in a timely manner, and um, that is what I will continue to do. And with that being said, my game reviews will have everything that my old video game reviews will have and if you guys haven't listened to it i still have my stuff up on soundcloud they were just uh podcasts that i came out with with one of my buddies that unfortunately couldn't do the podcast anymore so it's not really an active podcast i'm not uploading any more podcasts but the uh the format will be the same on how i review those games and so the link to that soundcloud uh page is down below i uh, i stopped uploading last year sometime i believe around this time last year but getting into spider-man ps4 this game is amazing and i'm sure that i am not the first person that you have heard this from because everybody is saying that and that is because it's true and as far as the campaign goes the story here is a true stand out. This is one of the more organic and one of the more natural Spider-Man stories that you will see. And I, I, I feel like, you know, I've been racking my brain just as to why this works more than um, a lot of the films do. And uh, there have been many Spider-Man films, so why does this story really stand out to people? And I had to think about it, and then I was like, you know what? It, it's it's how long a game is. If you take a uh, a good Spider-Man story, and you try to compress it into a two-hour movie, there is some things that are just going to get lost because you have to tell that story in two hours. But when you have a uh, 10-hour game, a 15-hour game, you really can explore a lot of the elements a lot more and have smaller things happen in between so everything doesn't feel so compact in the story mode here. And um, I really feel like those elements are what makes this story so compelling. In the story here, Peter Parker has been going through uh, being Spider-Man for quite some time. He could be considered a veteran at it at this point in his life. But that doesn't mean that he still doesn't have a lot more to learn because he does. And that comes when a mysterious clan shows up in New York that he has to deal with. And as those events go on, it will inspire a uh, another comic book villain that is well more known and at that point in time towards the uh the last two hours of this campaign it definitely kicks up and it really becomes a, a epic spider-man story along with that you have a very natural feeling relationship between spider-man and mary jane as they deal with how peter parker has been spider-man for so long and they have been on again off again for so long that how could they think that this time would be the last time 
for them and how are they going to make it right in their relationship and how Mary Jane is going to be more of a priority in his life and a more important person in his life. They have changed characteristics of uh, Mary Jane to be more strong-willed. She's actually a hard-hitting reporter in this uh, in this version and even though that strikes me as a uh, very different than in the uh, the comics that I read as a child, I will say that that definitely makes her a uh, stronger element to this story. And there are a whole lot more spoilers that I could spoil for you guys, but I won't do it. There are definite things that this story sets up that uh, could push this whole universe that has been created here by Sucker Punch, that is the studio, to just have an even better second game that I cannot wait to play, and they better come up with it. They better come up with it. And I will give the campaign of this game a 10 out of 10. You couldn't ask for a better story to that campaign, and it is actually the perfect length. It took me about... Uh, 10 to 15 hours to beat and uh, that is with doing side quests and everything like that so um i actually feel like it is just a a really really well paced story mode and getting into the gameplay of spider-man you know i've been playing spider-man games for so 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 long i think it could go back to the nes and the sega genesis how long i've been playing spider-man games and um Man, I have seen the evolution to what this is, and I've played pretty much almost every single one, and uh, as far as controls go, this one is the, the best. What I will say is the standout here is how Rocksteady has taken to what Arkham Origins and uh, Arkham City and all of those Arkham games have done for uh, combat and really implement that here and um, to, to really, really solid success, but making it its own game. I will say that even though there were gadgets in those Batman games, I didn't really use them too much, to be quite honest with you, especially during combat. I just wanted Batman to hand-to-hand -hand maul his enemies. But here, if you do that, you will lose. And I do like how you have to think like Spider-Man would think. You gotta jump around a lot more at first. And you have to use a lot more of your skill set and weaponry than in those Arkham games. You have Spider-Man bombs that you can use, you have spider trackers, you have have these uh, uh, spider type things that lure guys into a certain area where you can take them out silently. The way that this game forces you to switch up your playstyle as the game goes on really gives this thing its own voice and sets it apart from what those Arkham games did. The swinging this around the so city in this game projects. is so smooth and intuitive and just amazing. It has never felt better in any of the Spider-Man games. It is just really, really, it puts you into being Spider-Man. And you feel like you are swinging along New York with Spider-Man. And even though uh, at first it does take some getting used to, as you do get used to it, it is incredibly, incredibly rewarding. And especially uh, when you get one of the upgrades where you can uh, do Spidey transitions where he does his own tricks in between uh, transitioning into a, another web that he slings and you can make him do all that. And you get leveling up points for that there is a whole lot of upgrading to do here as well and even though i felt some upgrades were a uh, kind of needless the upgrade tree here uh balances between some things that are really really helpful and uh a lot of that has to do with the transitions and thus the 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 uh traversing around in the city to make it feel more organic and smooth and you have other ones that just help out in combat a little bit but I do feel like as far as the upgrade tree goes I've really focused on the traversal
things. And then you add that with all of the Spidey suits that you can get in this. Man, there are a ton of cool suits that you guys will want to collect. And even though there is no black suit Spider-Man, I do feel like it'll come out in later DLC, definitely. And uh, what is cool about those suits is each time you unlock a suit, it also uh, unlocks its power. And that doesn't mean that you can't just take that power and apply it to another suit. Because as long as you have that suit, that power can just stay where it is and you can just go to another suit which is just awesome and then on top of that you have power-ups in the uh, same menu screen that you can also uh, upgrade and there are a whole lot of those that you can collect there is a lot to this game as you can tell just from me rambling on and uh, I will just say that um, uh, as far as what is not too good, you know, the camera has always been a problem in Spider-Man games. It's a problem here. It's not as much of a problem as in other games. But still, you will get into situations where you will just come across a point where uh, the camera doesn't go quite where you need it to go. And you can't really catch up with the action because Spider-Man is going to move really damn fast. And on top of that, you know, I am uh, really used to the Arkham layout as far as the controller goes. And this is really counterintuitive for that. And uh, I, I found myself really having to get used to that. But that might be a problem with me and not so much a problem with this game. So with all of that, I will say that the gameplay here is really strong. And uh, I will give it a 9 out of 10. I won't say that this is one of the best gameplay for games because it is not but what i will say is that it does have some of the best gameplay elements for uh franchise as far as marvel games goes and getting into the video and audio quality in my game reviews those are going to be lumped up into one element because i got to get through this quick so what i will say is um you know there has been some controversy that uh goes along with this and that is just that a lot of the gameplay footage that we did see last year um, doesn't really match up with what we see as the final product. And it seems like um, this game has suffered from a, a little downscaling as far as the uh, graphics is concerned. And I will say that I do notice it, but that isn't to say that this game doesn't look good. I will actually say that this game still looks great. Some of the shading and a lot of the lighting effects are toned down, but uh, you, you still have great shading, lifelike shading, and lifelike uh, lighting effects that really appear to bring this to life. And what I will say is a lot of little details are actually incorporated into New York City when you are just web slinging along, you feel like you are in New York and there are so many different little areas and pockets that you can go into and notice things from um, other Spider-Man games and the uh, Avengers Tower that you can find. And um, it is something really cool that I, I did appreciate probably the most about this game. One gripe that I did have here, and it might be a small one, is that they definitely took liberties with how these characters just appeared to look. I, I, I didn't quite like the way that Peter Parker looked in this game. He didn't really come across as Peter Parker to me. But uh, other characters like uh, Mary Jane felt very authentic and... Um, Doc Ock felt very authentic also, but specifically Peter Parker and Aunt May in this game, um, those two, I just have a clear image in my head of what they will look like, and uh, this isn't that. And there are little texture pop-ins as well, but really this is a very solid looking game that I will give an 8 out of 10 to. It isn't the best looking game that you're going to get on the PS4, but it is a damn damn good one getting into replayability of this game this has a lot of replayability 
And for a single player game that really doesn't have any online multiplayer, that is saying a lot. But there is actually a lot to do in this game. Uh, the campaign will take you a little over 10 hours if you don't do a lot of the side missions. But you're going to want to do those side missions, and there are a lot to do. And then, on top of that, you have to get all of the upgrades for all of the suits and for Spider-Man himself. And there are certain things that you need to do for that. None of it feels extra here. A lot of it just feels like fun things to do after you've completed the game. And then on top of that, you have these areas that you can go into. And uh, it feels kind of like a horde mode. But there are tons and tons of those to get. And of course, this is an open world game. And so you have to have the Assassin's Creed... Uh, unlocking of each individual city that definitely feels organic to this game and hey unlocking them is pretty easy in this game but it's something that you guys will definitely want to do and you have these uh, black cat side quests as well they, they even I, I know that I'm forgetting uh, smaller parts of the replayability here and that is just because there are a whole lot more Oh, 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 and the Spider-Man packs, you know, I forgot to say the Spider-Man packs that you can go and collect and um, your spider sense will tell you where they are and um, they actually give you little insights into uh, different things about this game that you guys didn't know about Spider-Man lore. All of these are, are just real nuggets of enjoyment. You can't ask for a more playable game than this. As far as my last looks at Spider-Man PS4, it is hard pressed for me to say that I wanted a better game than this because this was a largely, largely enjoyable game that I had tons and tons of fun with and I would still be playing today if I didn't have other games to review for you guys because I do have uh, more games coming up and um, man this game is just largely enjoyable with its story campaign which is just excellent and a cut above the rest with the gameplay that is also really really great and solid graphics so much replayability that you won't even know what to do with Man, I, I truly did love this whole entire experience. And when you add up all my scores for Spider-Man PS4, you come out to a 37 out of 40. A 37 out of 40. That is really, really high. But it is just like a strong experience that is really going to stick with me. And I can't wait for Sucker Punch to come out with a, a new Spider-Man game. And you better do it. You better. So, guys, I I, I am uh, recording my Tomb Raider review later on this week for you guys. I will have that coming up to you real soon. And uh, on the uh, the 4K Blu-ray feed, you know that you guys are having uh, Evil Dead coming out this week. And then the Matrix uh, 2 sequels are coming out. And uh, then, uh, what, what else? Oh, 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 yeah. 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm getting into Kubrick. I have a whole lot coming out for you guys so much that I actually had to take the day off of work to get this straightened out for uh, and, and laid out for you guys. Um, that is just my dedication to you guys. So thank you for watching. You guys are awesome and you are totally, totally worth it. And I will see all of you next time.